name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am praying this. Yeah, it's going to be a uplifting sermon because the focus is on lifting up our eyes. I want you right now to lift your eyes up. Okay, and when you do that, you lift up your heads. Bible talks about lifting, and Bible talks about lifting up our faces. Now I want you to do the reverse. Be downcast right now. And you notice when, when you're going through hard times, shame or guilt or fear or depression, your face goes down, doesn't it? And you kind of look down. That's, that's where the emotions and the Bible reverses it. <clears throat> and it's always challenging us to lift up. Lift up your eyes to the hills, but the hills aren't going to save you. From where is our help to come? And from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Uh, we live in such a monotheistic culture, we take it for granted, but most cultures, and you would know this, Marty, are not originally monotheistic, they're animistic and polytheistic, which means they will have a, a God or a spirit for almost everything, anything impressive or anything they're afraid of. Uh, people in Africa, a lot of animism, and they'll have uh, the God of the local mountain, or the God of the river, or the God of the trees, or the God of <clears throat> uh, this, and they, they often try to placate these different spirits, and so we got to realize that Judaism and Christianity is Jewish, and by the way, happy Purim. Uh, today we remember Esther. Um, Judaism is radically monotheistic, and Jesus repeated it. Jesus said, here, quoting the Old Testament, here, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And that we take for granted. Um, but remember the expression, God helps those who helps themselves, which is not in the Bible. Yeah, it's from Benjamin Franklin, but Benjamin Franklin took it uh, from the Greeks, and theirs wasn't God, it was, it was the gods. And as our culture uh, becomes more so-called secular, it actually becomes more pagan, and so the gods are sneaking back in. In the New Age movement, there are many <clears throat> spirits and gods that people are tapping into. Animism is rising again. And God's answer for animism and polytheism is Psalm 121, Kathy's favorite song. I lift mine eyes up to Mount Seymour and Girls Mountain and Whistler. Ah, uh, you know, as a teenager, that's where I was on Sunday morning. I was worshiping on the mountains, but I would turn out for Easter, <clears throat> the high holy days, and I didn't know where my help came from. Men often don't want to admit they need help. Sometimes women nowadays are imitating the false masculine, and they want to be just as independent. I can do it myself. I don't need anybody to help me. And you know what? You remember why the three wise men were late for Christmas? Wouldn't ask directions. <laughs> Where does my help? And in the 88 to 12 steps, you know, the, the, the step one is they cry for help. I admit that my life is unmanageable. It means I need help. <clears throat> my life is unmanageable. I need help. Where does my help come from? And nobody likes to admit admitting that they're feeling helpless. Sometimes we want to be helpful, but we won't let anybody help us. Have you ever been that way? Yes. Sometimes nurses can be like, oh, there's a nurse. <clears throat> they want to help everybody, but they won't ask for help. They don't want to be a father. Do I hear an amen? <clears throat> but our help comes from one source. The Lord, the maker of heaven, and earth. And you might have noticed <clears throat> there 
there's a little controversy about the Vessel of Hope, which actually, Franklin Graham said, uh, it was very helpful because everybody's talking about it. They all got there. <clears throat> Hardly any protesters. Uh, but Franklin, uh, you know, he said a lot of that is just smoke screen. The real issue is that we need the help of God. We need Christ. And our culture often struggles. It doesn't want to do that. <clears throat> but wasn't that amazing? When hundreds of teenagers and young people ran to the front saying, I need Jesus. I need help. I can't do it on my own. You'd think the opioid crisis would be enough to remind people we need something. Harm reduction only goes so far, and it backfires. So then David, in his song of sin, <clears throat> and they would sing this three times a year, marching as pilgrims to Jerusalem. And they'd be singing this. You can think of Brian Dirksen and his guitar. They'd be going to Jerusalem for Passover, for Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And they'd be singing. And as you get close to Jerusalem, what do you see? Hills. You see hills. Now, <clears throat> Mount Zion is Jerusalem. Now, we on the North Shore could say, what kind of mountain is that? That's just a hill, like sort of little mountain. But in Israel, <clears throat> that's where you're heading for. And, and that's why it's often dangerous, because you're going through the valleys, and they're singing, and they're rejoicing. How did they get there? How many people walk to church today? Raise your hand. <clears throat> Nobody walked. They all walked. And they'd be singing, imagine, People walking to church in droves, singing, welcome Glenn. Yeah. <clears throat> and then David goes on to say, He will not let your foot slip. Isn't that an amazing, powerful? Now, when you're up on the mountains on the North Shore, how many of you have climbed the mountains or gone hiking on the mountains on the North Shore? <clears throat> what do you got to be careful for? Bears. Yeah, animals. What else? Getting lost. Getting lost. How about going out of bounds? Yeah. As a nurse or rescue, as to re rescue in some gully. And, and then there's the picture of them transporting by helicopter and pulling you out. <clears throat> and God is saying, He will not let your foot slip. Have you ever slipped off something? In fact, it's particularly the recent ice and snow. You know, he will not, and that's not just speaking physically, but spiritually. He's not going to let your foot slip. He's for you. He's watching you. He's with you. He'll never desert you. He'll never abandon you. God is here in the good times and the bad times. When you're downcast, when you're looking up, he will not let your foot slip. Is that good news? It is. <clears throat> then it carries on. It gets even better. He who watches over you. Have you ever watched over your kids? Or your relatives, right? And what do you do when you're watching over them? Making uh, sure they're okay. How about at the beach? Yeah, I remember being up at Penticton, we'd be all playing at the beach, and I assumed my parents were relaxing. They were watching us like a hawk. Because at Boundary Bay, <clears throat> we'd get out too far, and, and then the water would come in, and they'd be watching us. And God watches you like on a hawk, like an eagle. He's watching over you, and he will not slumber. Uh, parents, <clears throat> you ever fell asleep watching your kids? That's one of the parents' worst fears. One of my kids. He who watches over Israel, and God's heart for Israel is not changed, will neither slumber nor sleep. How many other nations have come back after being uh, away for almost 2,000 years? Didn't happen. That is an amazing miracle, the preservation of the nation of Israel, when the nations keep attacking. And we can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says, those who bless Israel will be blessed. 
People get, they can't figure that out. They curse Israel, we will be. That doesn't mean they get it right all the time. Um, but God watches over Israel. And we're grafted in, so He watches over us. If we're going, He watches over us. <clears throat> and He won't sleep. And the good news to give you a struggle with insomnia. Because God doesn't sleep, that gives us permission to sleep. Because sometimes when you're worried about your family or your situation, it's like you can't sleep. You would almost feel guilty sleeping because the problems are so bad. But what if you gave God your shift? What if you gave your shift? God, can you take my shift? And God will say, I'd be glad to. Because he neither slumbers nor sleeps. You know, Psalm 127 says, In vain you rise early in the morning and stay up late, for he gives to his beloved sleep, and you are his beloved. He gives you, and he wants you, he doesn't want you to wait till you're dead to rest in peace. Despite what it says in Halloween, <clears throat> he wants you to rest in peace. Now, come unto me, all you that are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you another job to do. No, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus can break the curse of insomnia. Okay, we can pray for you later today for that issue. He will take your ship because he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He rests, but he doesn't sleep. He watches over you. We continue uh, looking at verse 5. The Lord watches over you. He's repeating. He watches over you. Why does the Bible repeat itself? So it's the one else you forget. Yeah, so we get it. He's watching over you. You're not alone. Jesus, right before his ascension, said, Lo, I am with you. Always. He's watching over you. We never, two or three, are praying. Lo, I am in your midst. <clears throat> the Lord is your shade. He is your son's tree. He is your umbrella at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Now you remember Jonah. And Jonah, did he want to help the people in Nineveh? No. In Mosul? that are being rescued at this very moment? No. What did he want to happen to them? Boom! Yeah. <clears throat> and he's, he's under this tree, and he's so disappointed God didn't knit them, and then the tree dies, and he gets sunstroke, and what does he say? I wish I was dead. Oh. Yeah. And God says, don't even care for those 120,000 men, women, children, and animals. <clears throat> and God uh, is our covering. Isn't that wonderful? He, he protects us. The sun will not harm you by day. How many of you ever had sunstroke? <clears throat> I've had it. We had a, a Jesus Music Festival Living Waters down at Kids Beach, and I didn't have a hat, and so I got sunstroke. It's a nasty uh, feeling. And God will uh, protect us and the moon by night. Now most people say, well, why would you be afraid of the moon? What's that all about? Well, by night, what comes out? Animals. Yeah, animals <clears throat> and uh, terrorists and criminals and you can fall over cliffs uh, and uh, the witches, witches, even today, worship the moon. And many people think in the old days you get diseases from the moon. So they were afraid of the moon. They worship the moon as a deity. But we realize that we don't worship the moon. <clears throat> the moon is God's creation. We don't worship the sun. Like in yoga, uh, they have different postures to different deities. 
a light and sun and the moon, and we don't worship any of that. We're free because there's only one God. There's only one God. And then in verse 7, it says, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. So wherever you're coming, wherever you're going, in your birth, in your death, in your journeys, in your travels, he's watching. It's not good news. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never abandon you. He's there for you. He is on your side. He's your advocate. The Lord is watching. He's going to protect you. You are safe. Uh, the Belgrade people gave me a great book called The Word of Wisdom. And what it is is Billy Graham learned from his father and law to soak in the Psalms and the Proverbs every single day, like Psalm 121. There's power in the Psalms, isn't there? There's great, if we go to the Psalms, <clears throat> we're gonna be uh, singing uh, Brian Jerkson's version later. You see, if there's a revival in the Psalms, anytime the Bible breaks out, they go to the Psalms. I just read an amazing book by David Matthew. I saw the Welsh revival. And what happened? When the Welsh people, uh, when revival broke out, the miners confused the donkeys. The miners confused the donkeys because the miners got the donkeys to do what they wanted by swearing at them. And the miners got converted, so instead they were singing psalms. And the donkeys didn't know what to do. They had to retrain the donkeys. Isn't that amazing? The donkeys didn't know what to do, because they're no longer being cursed. They're being blessed. How would you like another Welsh revival to break out? You know, and that's what we need. That's what we saw a taste of, an amazing taste at the festival. I'd uh, like to invite anyone that took part in the festival uh, to come up at this point. We're going to share a bit about what it was like. 